In this video, I build an amazing steam train to transport all of the items from our mega factory. I also build a huge industrial station area with a moving container loader as well as a crazy system for transporting all of the items from the factories to the train. What could go wrong? Let's create. In the last video, I finished our multi-material mega factory. And it's all working great. So outside of the video, I even finished the yard. And I did that by clearing the area, placing hundreds of frame blocks, texturing them with variations of gravel and coarse dirt, building a few walls, added a little detail with more frame blocks as well as barrels, item vaults and a few piles of resources. I also finally added in the factory doors as well as these lovely little stairs and railings for access to the other two factories. So there we go, my little factory area is 99% complete. And I say 99% because obviously there's still no snow around it and this is going to be a very snowy area. But the snow is not going to be coming down anytime soon, that's going to be something I do towards the end of this phase, so for now it can just be a non-snowy factory area. What doesn't look good though is our station area which is going to be the main focus of this episode today and the first thing I need to do is get all of the items down to this station area that we're producing over here and my plan was to add yet another little forklift truck or some sort of contraption to take all of the items from these vaults down to this area here where they would be sorted out and put into a train that would take them to somewhere else. However due to the absolute nightmare I had in the last episode of these things all banging into each other and crashing and causing problems I really don't want to add another one into the mix. So instead of using a contraption to take the items over to this area here, I'm just going to feed the items down through some chutes into some conveyors and into some storage drawers over here. Because I've got a really nice idea of how I'm going to get the items actually into the train. And for now, these are just going to go underneath this wall here on the outside of our little yard area. So now that they've all got void upgrades and emerald upgrades in there as well, it's time to give them the old quantify key and the lock key and then figure out what's going to go in where? Cobble, iron nuggets, flint, clay, sand, gravel, red sand, terracotta, clay, bricks, soul sand and glass, dead brushes, gold nuggets, quartz, scoria, diorite, andesite and granite. So yes, it was exactly 19. So I just need to now get all of the items from up there into there without interfering with any of these train tracks, without breaking any of my signals and without causing even more havoc. What could go wrong? I think that's just a case of digging down underneath them and putting chutes in. Stick a chute there. Oh no, it's going to <laughs> don't start doing it yet jeez now we've got a mess so underneath here we should now see a whole bunch of holes all directly under these vaults but there is a problem and it's quite a big problem really because if i just stick chutes underneath all of these vaults and lead them into there and they've got void upgrades on it's just going to literally take every single item out of those vaults move them down into the storage drawers and then there's going to be no items left for these fork trucks and dumper trucks to take to the other factories to produce the other items so i need to get clever i need to use a whole bunch more of these threshold switches is to determine exactly how many items are in each vault and only allow them through if it's over a certain amount. And I think the simplest thing to do would be to put a threshold switch on underneath with a smart chute next to it, and that's not going to allow anything through unless this is below the threshold, but we actually want to invert it. If it's got anything between 90% and 100%, just dump it all out below. So I believe if I click invert signal here, yeah, that's going to open that up. That's going to dump out the cobblestone, and that should stop once it gets to this level here with a bit of luck if I've done this correctly and there we go it stopped and it's not going to start again until it's back up to 100% so we know how that works and we can add that into every single one of these things great and now I've got a big old pile of cobble on the floor. Burn it all! Okay, so they've all got threshold switches now. Before I start fiddling around with the settings on those, though, what I want to do is actually get the rest of the systems in place linking down to our actual storage drawers because once I actually stick shoes underneath things, they're all going to start chucking out items and I need somewhere for them to go. I think I've got a whole bunch more digging to do. So it's time to pull out the portable drill and get busy. Oh, and I've fallen into the basement. Oh man, I don't want to be in the basement. And if I don't want to be in the basement, I guess I need to put in a floor at this level here so that I can actually dig down underneath this stuff. In fact, it needs to go block lower and have plenty of space in here. And now I'm just thinking, how am I going to make it so that I don't just get tons of one item through here and all of the other ones get backed up? And that leads me to another problem. See, a lot of these things, like clay balls, are never going to be full because we're using those to be processed elsewhere, but I still want some of them to go down into storage. So I really need a decent way to split these things off without taking everything and not relying on all of these being full. So this could end up being quite a problem unless it's one of the end products like these ones here. All of these can go because they're not going to be used for processing 
anything else. So I think what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stick a piece of netherrack on each one of the ones that I don't care if it takes all of them. And that realistically is most of them apart from cobble, clay balls, sand, red sand and soul sand. So everything else can go down to the train area. Soul sand, red sand and clay balls are the only ones that don't fill fully up. Whereas sand and cobblestone still do seem to fill all the way to the top of the vault. So that's only three items that I really need to worry about only taking a little bit of. I think I'm just going to get everything in for the rest of the items for now and worry about that later. And after a whole bunch of backwards and forwards in over this design, I've finally come up with something that's working very well and I've solved all of my little problems. Each of the sets of shoots from each factory comes onto a conveyor and gets stored in an item vault and then they come out through brass funnels over to this big item vault over here and all of these items get distributed into three draw controller slaves. And this is what it's like on the other side. We've got all of these shoots coming into this item vault, all of those shoots going into that one, and all of those ones going into that one. So everything gets collected in here and then gets sent out this way into the slaves. And the reason we're doing that was because when I started this, there were just way too many items coming through all at once that one draw controller couldn't handle it. And now, as you can see, in each one of these drawers, we've got a whole bunch of items. Some of them with the redstone lamps on are actually full because I've come up with a clever system that solves another problem. The other problem was that by taking every single item out of every single vault apart from the ones that we were using to send to other factories, it just meant that the entire system was just massively overproducing. And I've solved that problem with smart shoots and redstone links. On the back of every single one of the storage drawers is another threshold switch with a redstone link on it. And those redstone links are attached to smart shoots underneath each one of these storage vaults that basically say don't take any items out of here if we've got too many already in the storage drawers and that means that basically if we're getting way too many of one item it will void off any excess but it'll also tell the system just don't send any more of that down and that means that the storage vault at the top can then start accumulating it as well so for instance cobblestone we've got 131,000 in here that's full and if we hop back over to the cobblestone vault you can also see that there's a whole bunch in here as well and it's still collecting in here and then the vaults have still got their threshold switches with the redstone links on to stop the factories from sending items to those if they get too full. So we've basically got a double buffer. And that's working really well because we don't want to overproduce items because if we're overproducing, we're using too many of the raw resources in order to create all of the items that we really don't need. Speaking of overproducing, I've put way too many of the emerald upgrades in here. Realistically, I didn't need any upgrades in here because we only want a small amount for each one because this is just what's getting sent to the train and the train can't hold that many. So what I need to do now is light a whole bunch of fires and empty out as many items as I can into the fire so that I can remove the storage upgrades and just leave in the void upgrades. And this could take a while because some of these have got ridiculous numbers of items in. This is fine. And finally, all of these things have had all of their storage upgrades removed, which means that now I can start this machine going again. And you can already see we've got a backlog of items waiting to come through. Funnel, funnel, funnel. Here we go. Many, many items coming back through. This is good news. It's time to build the station. See, I had big plans to have a couple of big buildings in this area as well as a bunch of production, but I think this is mostly just going to be station now, and it's going to be an industrial station, which means it's going to need a lot of gravel, I imagine, which means I'm going to have to place even more frame blocks. Oh, jeez. If you're enjoying this video, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. It only takes a couple of seconds and it really helps me out. And there we go, we've got a platform area ready for our station to be built on top of, and I've added in a couple of tracks. This one for the actual trains to be travelling through, and this one to actually build a train. And that's exactly what I'm going to do now. And the train I'm going to be building is this one, the Sir Nigel Gresley. And isn't it a magnificent beast? And there it is in all of its glory. What a wonderful job I've done building this incredible train. It looks just like the... It's a joke, jeez! You're getting your knickers in a twist, you lot, don't you?
The Sir Nigel Gresley is an LENR Class A4 462 steam locomotive built in 1937 at Doncaster Works. It ran on the London and Northern Eastern Railway for 29 years and holds the post-war speed record for steam locomotives on British Railways with a top speed of 112 miles per hour. Over the course of its time on the tracks, it's been repainted several times, often appearing in wartime black, and is one of six A4 Class locomotives to be preserved. After being purchased for preservation in 1966, it continued on the rails in several liveries, eventually being moved to the National Railway Museum in York in 1996. Over the years it's been rebuilt, repaired and overhauled several times and after its last extensive overhaul in April 2022 it's now operating a passenger carrying service on the Seven Valley Railway. What a history! Well, with that time lapse and then a whole bunch of time fiddling with it afterwards, I think I'm happy at least with the engine. I've had to have a little bit of artistic license to change things here and there because even though I've got all of these frame blocks, it's still very different to get that really interesting shape of the original train. But I don't think I've done too much of a bad job. I really like the big wheels, I like the shape, I like the arches, and this little cab at the back I've just added in here a blast furnace for no particular reason, a little whistle on the inside, some valves, a lever, some train control controls and a nice seat to sit down and this is open at the back because obviously we need to have the tender here full of coal and then we need to have a whole bunch of carriages so i'm gonna just quickly whip together a tender i'll be back with you when i've done that and there we go a nice simple little tender to try and match the one in the picture i've added some coal on the inside and at the front here is where you would stand and scoop it out of that there and shove it into the blast furnace there so i think that's come out okay now i guess i probably need to get it working but the other thing i'm going to need here is some wagons to carry all of our goods. The problem is though, this is so big. I was expecting to have a train plus two or three carriages behind it or trucks or whatever you want to call them. Cars. Yeah, train cars to carry all of the items. But um, mm, it, it, it's a bit big. Anyway, I want to test it. I done you, Sir Nigel Gresley. Now, will it drive? There's only one way to find out. I am now controlling Sir Nigel Gresley. Everything's attached. This is very good news. Oh, 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 geez. The, the corners. <laughs> <laughs> it is not it's not really ideal for these tycoon oh my goodness drifting i'm drifting the train into the station amazing hang on wait stop oh now i can't get out i can't get out right, let's just shift this stupid thing out of the way and let's take this for a tr proper drive around our area here we go we're gonna drift around this corner here <laughs> amazing what a drift oh my goodness ah! It works perfectly. Shut up. Right, now we've got to get down here without crashing into the other train. And this thing is massive. But I want to make sure it fits through the tunnels, which it does. I can't even see the front of it so long. Well, aside from its interesting cornering system... Oh, geez, here comes the other train. Stop. It fits through the tunnels. It's the right width for the stations. But I like it. I think this is going to be a wonderful goods train. <laughs> It doesn't look ridiculous at all. I don't know what you're talking about. Drifting around there. Amazing. We made it, guys. What an epic adventure. Wasn't really an adventure. You didn't go anywhere. Yeah, but I'll shut up. It's fine. Okay, I'm going to disassemble it. And the first thing I'm going to do is move the seat and the controls because they're incredibly annoying being in the middle here. So if I break that seat and break those controls, if I put the controls to the side there and the seat there, I shouldn't have a problem getting in and out now. So that's good. Now I need a couple of wagons. I don't know if I'm going to fit two on here. Jeez. Um, I'm going to see what what I can do. Well, these might not look like too much, but I've tried to make containers on these little dollies, or I guess carriages, and I've used some grab rails and andesite steps and things like that to try and decorate them a little bit. They've all got little bumpers on using the valves, and inside, there's a couple of little things going on. Each one has a portable storage interface as well as two toolboxes and these toolboxes are basically going to be set with the items that we're going to be collecting from each thing so the portable storage interfaces are facing upwards which means we need to get items in from the top into this one and this one but i want this station to be able to put items into any train providing they've got a portable storage interface at this height facing upwards in any position and i've got a really good idea of how i'm going to achieve that but before we get into that i need to actually make sure this is all going to work so i suppose i better get the glue glue back out and get these all stuck together and with this last bit of glue here that should be that one done as well okay let's test it and let's see if it's all gonna go we're gonna leave anything behind doesn't look like we've left anything behind well that's good oh, i'll go the wrong way oh geez no 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 reverse it's working perfectly 
Everything is going round. It doesn't look weird at all going round these corners. It looks perfectly normal. It's all rather good. Right. Now, before we get on with the train loader, I feel like this train's a little bit unbalanced. I feel like it needs another carriage, really, but I don't know how I'm going to squeeze that in. I can move the train forward a little bit, but then that's going to block this bit. So if we ever have two trains down here, that's going to be a problem. And the idea with this second bit of line here was that we'd be able to use this as a train building area, but realistically, I'd rather have have one big long train in here that actually fits. So I think I'm just going to move this station up slightly, extend the train a little bit and get rid of that bit of track. There we go. We have one more carriage at the back now. I believe it's all glued together, which makes our train look a whole lot more normal, I think, maybe. But now I feel like it needs another one. But I'm not making another one. Right, okay. This station loader, it's going to be big. I'm going to start with a whole bunch of girders. I'm at a point where I'm in two minds how to move forward with this. I've got a basic structure in place. We've got a little building here and we've got another container being held by these chains on this contraption that's running below this gantry shaft. But that wasn't my original plan. Now, my idea was to have a container, but the idea was it wasn't going to be running on a gantry shaft. It was going to be running on something like this, which would be a platform that would go down both sides and the whole thing would move up and down, moving the container with it. And the advantage of that is if I link this this underground I can actually link that entire thing directly up with these storage drawers and get the right items out in the right quantities and that's kind of what I want to do because it makes life nice and simple for the storage that said without this beastie contraption thing going over either side this gantry system actually looks really nice and neat and I think visually it'll all just look a whole lot better problem is in order to get the items into this container I would have to have a storage interface going into this building I would then have to find a way of pumping all of those items into this building and sorting them out so we don't get the wrong items in the wrong places and that's a lot more complicated than what I originally planned but I think that's what I want to go for so I guess I'd better rip out all of this rubbish and start coming up with a new plan so the best way to get items in there without affecting our track or anything would probably to be coming up with a chute round about here somewhere and that'll kind of look like a drain from the building anyway so let's say we had a bunch of chutes coming up here no I don't like it I really don't like that at all. No, forget that idea. We need to find a better way of getting the items up into there and then across to there. Oh, geez. That's, this is why I wanted to do it underground. It would have been loads easier. How weird would this look if I had these coming down either side of that? Almost like it was steady in the container. Does that work? Doesn't look too awful. Yeah, that kind of works. Okay, we're going with this. Okay, I've made it a little bit wider so it's not going to interfere with the sides of the train as it comes through. And now that all fits in there quite nicely nicely so the way i'm going to get this underground is quite simple really literally just dig through the floor a couple of blocks extend it down with any old block really but i'll use girder since so i've got them on me and then i can just feed this across here to some sort of collection point that's going to grab all of these items that's loads easier so back down underground where we've got our little gantry system coming in here we can just put the toolboxes on here as long as it's all connected to the same system this will work absolutely fine and then we need to decide what we're going to have in each of our rail cars and it really doesn't matter because they're all going to go to the same place and they're all going to distribute the items into the same bit so we'll just do it in order i guess so our first toolbox is going to have those items the second toolbox is going to have those items third toolbox will have those items the fourth with those the fifth with those and i'm going to double up and the site there because we've got extra of that so the last one can just be sand wonderful right so nothing else can go in any of these and they'll remember what's in them when you take the items out which is fantastic so all i've got to do now is get the items from these into these that's easy 
easy too. Conveyors. Absolutely loads of conveyors. Right, okay, that's all the conveyors in. Good. Now, each one of these is going to have a brass funnel on the front, but I'm not putting them on yet because all the items will fall out. And I'm going to put a storage interface on each one of these as well. And on the back of these storage interfaces... Oh, jeez, I can't get on. I'm going to have funnels if I can reach. This is going to be awkward. I can't, I can't get in. Just need a slam. There we go. Now I should be able to creep in. There we go. Okay, so they've all got funnels on. Imagine those have all got brass funnels on. Using imagination, peeps, it's good for you. Then all we need at this point here is another possible storage interface there, and that'll connect with those. And because that's attached to our system, all of the items will go into there, they'll go into these toolboxes, and then they'll go into the train. That's my little plan. I'm hoping it's going to work. I can't see why it won't, but it's going to have to move quite a long way in order to pick up all of these items. So I'm going to do something a little bit silly now. Like normal then? Yeah, pretty much like normal. See, portable storage interfaces are cheap. In fact, I just made 64 of them. I didn't mean to make 64, but that's fine. So I can just have a whole bunch of them all the way along this gantry shaft like this, and then they can all connect at the same time. Nice. It just needs gluing together and a bit of power. Glue, mini glue, lots of glue, so much glue, ridiculous amounts of glue, quite possibly too much glue. However, I'm going to make another minor change. You see, we've got this gantry shaft running along here, and it is possible to power it from this point here in the top of our building, but we, then we would need to lead power into this building. We don't need any of that anymore. Get rid of that. Then we would need to run power into this building in order to get that all powered up. But there is another way we can do this, and that's to actually have the other gantry down here and have the one at the top as a fake one. Hmm, but should I? It works so well up there. Now if I just stick that on there, that's now all connected to our system. And what I'd like to do at the top now, although I don't know if it's going to be possible, is to get rid of this gantry shaft and grab some monorail. That looks a lot more of a sturdier construction than that gantry shaft, but I don't know if it's going to let me add a bogey to this and then have that part of a contraption as well. So we'll find out in a second. There we go. Oh yes, that looks very fancy. It's not going to let me assemble it, but can I break it? And it stays. It does. Now, will that remain part of the contraption? I don't know. If I glue it together, maybe? There's only one way to find out. Stick a gearbox on there, come this way, run out of run out of shaft, jeez. Make some more shaft, bring it all the way down here. Then we want to send the gantry so many meters, and then we want it to come back again so many meters. But I don't know how many meters. I have no idea. Go. Oh, it's going the right way. This, this is good. Is the whole thing moving? Kind of. Oh, it's linked with the... Oh, now it's coming back again. If the interface is linked, that's good. It didn't go five meters, and it didn't take that bogey with it. Okay, let's tell it to go... 15 meters. Go. So it'll get to there. It'll link the interfaces just like I wanted it to. That's good. But it should keep going after that. And it's also doing absolutely nothing with this train. But now it's gone. It didn't carry on. So let's connect that. And now let's see if it'll take the bogey with it when I apply some power. Which way is it going to go? It's going that way. It is. The bogey was going with it. That's good. All right. Let's stick a normal gear shift on. Stick a lever on that so we can reverse the direction. Attach that again and see if we can get it moving a bit further than it was. It'll come back, but it won't go further than that. Is that because there's blocks in the way? In that case, if I break a few more of these, will it go further? It will. Oh, no. It's the blocks that are... Oh, jeez. Oh, how... oh, in that case, we're going to have to have a trench. I don't want to have a trench. The other thing I could do is make this a train rather than a gantry system. And I could set up a couple of stations. I could tell it to come back to here to fill the items up. And then I could tell it to go all the way down here and come back again. But then it's not going to interface just naturally with these containers without separate stations for each one. I mean, the idea is that it's... a it looks like it's going to drop another container onto the train, but it's obviously not because it's already got the containers, but the container's got the items in that's transferring the items. It's, it's a good idea. I just, I don't want a trench. Okay, well, let's just make a trench for now and make sure it's all going to work. Jeez, what a stupid trench. Okay, I have dug a trench, even though I really don't want one. That should move down. I do like it, and I love the speed that it's going at. And hopefully once it's got items in, each one of those containers will connect, and they will all fill up with items. Here we go, and now it's going back. Fantastic. It's working. We just need to sort this trench problem out. But before we sort the trench problem out, I think it's about time we start getting some items in this thing and making sure that side of things is going to work. Okay, let's try it now with the items. If I click go, nothing. Why is my hot... What, what, what's going on with my hotbar? Why is it gone orange? There we go. Should be picking up items. It sure it is getting cobblestone, is it? Potentially. But is it going to deposit those items? Probably not, because I haven't set up the toolboxes inside the containers thinking about it. Toolbox to cobblestone. And we'll take those out. So it's only got two in there. All right, let's try that again. Has this actually got cobblestone in it now? That's the question. It has got 2,000 cobblestone in it. Okay, go. And now it's not... What? What are you doing? 
Nick, you're going without the contraption, mate. All right, you're all going to go together this time. Yes, it is. It's moving. It did, but it, oh, it's left the container. How do I do this? How do I do it every time? I've got to wait for it to go all the way down there and come back now. And let's try again. Press the button and nothing's happened again. What's your problem now? Go. There we go. Is it going to connect? No. Why didn't it connect? Why didn't you connect? Oh, it's, it has. It's got, it's got cobblestone in the train. It did it. It was just very quick. Does that mean this has got no cobblestone in? Yes, it, it worked. Okay, right. Let's get the rest of these items connected then. Get the toolboxes in the train set up and then we'll be good to go. Well, this is wonderful. It didn't work. This is Foxy from the future editing this video and it looked like it worked, but it didn't work. It didn't work in the way I expected it to, but it looked like it worked, but it didn't. Okay, trust me, it didn't work. Okay, all of the funnels are in place for our output. All of the toolboxes are set up on here. I've replaced the last one with sticks rather than sand just because we don't need it. And inside every single train carriage, all of the toolboxes have been set up to match the other ones. So now when I click go, this should go along, fill up absolutely everything and it should be fantastic. So let's click go. We should see all of these connect. That's great. Items are going into those. That's perfect. The toolbox are filling up with as many as they can. And now we should see any second now, these trains start to get items in potentially or not. They're not, why then why, why they're not connecting? Why are you not connecting to my train? Huh? Okay. Well, now I'm just all sorts of confused. Well, it appears I'm a moron. Contraptions cannot fill up trains. And the reason for that is that when it gets to where it's going, i.e. here, it becomes a structure again. So this isn't going to work. However, I do have an idea. And that idea involves tearing all of this gantry system to pieces. Stupid gantry system don't work with my stupid train. And my idea is instead of using the gantry system, we're going to use the monorail system instead with a bunch of stations. I need a schedule and a driver. I have no idea if this will work or not, but it's worth a try. Because the other idea I've got is well, it's not very good at all. Where's all the villagers gone? Oh, here's one. Hello, sir. <laughs> Dawn. I'm not a sir. Sorry about that, Dawn. You are now my train driver. Right, let me stick you some more controls in. There you go. You can go both ways now. Aren't you lucky? Phil, container one, container two, container three. Excellent. Right, Dawn. Please make this work. Go. No, you won't take the schedule. You're a rubbish driver. Right, you're fired. You can go back in your little house. There you go, Dawn. Right, I need a driver. Where did all the monkeys go? Ah, a fly. You'll do. Come here, fly. Uh, can, can, can I catch it? Come here. No, not the flowers, the fly. No, not the grass, the fly. Come here. Stop moving. There we go. Okay. Schedule for the fly. Oh, I got, oh, I got to make it a train, haven't I? Oh, that's probably why I couldn't give the villager a schedule. Oh, well, not to worry. We've got to fly now. Go. Is it going to work? Probably not. No, in my luck. Go into container two. No, it's not. I don't know where it's going. Oh, no, no. What, what, no where are you going? Okay. Ah, this station's in the wrong place. No, get back. No, stop it. Get, no, try again. Right, it's that fill. Good. It should be filling up with items, although it's already got them all. So, uh, no station matches container. It's it right here. How can it not match? Oh, maybe if I labeled it again, that would help. Okay, it is at con. What? Con oh, I've spelled it all wrong. Oh, my goodness. Right, there you go. Now, fill up my train fly. I need it full. You're not connecting. Doesn't work at all. <laughs> no. Fly, you're rubbish. What? Well, it seems to me that trains to trains and contraptions to trains just ain't gonna work. Oh man, oh, that, that sucks. Why does nothing ever go the way I want it to? Right, I'll be back in a bit. So sleeping on my problems, I've come up with one more idea, which I think just might work. And I really hope it does because I really don't want to have to tear everything out and come up with some janky solution. And my new plan means disassembling our train yet again, cracking our way back into our container wagons. And what I'm gonna do is break the, that block there, grab our toolbox, stick it there, and put a chute going into it from our storage interface. And with a bit of luck, when I move this thing on, we'll find that that toolbox actually ends up with something in it. Take the schedule, fly. Why, with the way, one, with what? Okay, driving it to container one. Is it going to connect? It is not. Connected before? Right, okay. Plan B then. Let's get rid of the stations. And let's put all of the gantry stuff back in again. Oh, geez. Let's click the button. And is it going to go this time? Is it going to connect? Now, why have you just stopped there? Over, overstressed? Oh, not this again. Don't tell me we've run out of lava again. Of course we've run out of lava. Okay, I've stopped it in place. They have connected. Is it transferring items? Please tell me it is. Doesn't seem to be. No, but me plan. Why? It has shoot. What if I had a brass funnel going into there facing that way in that item interface telling it to push items out? Does that do anything? No, this sucks. Disassemble train. 
send it back the other way yeah yeah it's connected and items are going in now that this is a structure but yeah conclusive evidence you can't fill up trains with a contraption that sucks but don't worry peeps because i've got a new plan okay for this new plan i want to know if you can get a comparator output from a portable storage interface when it's connected to something and it seems like you can if i disconnect these things that goes off if i connect them it goes on and the reason i want to know that is because i've got this set up over here which has a whole bunch of portable storage interfaces on it because i want this system to be able to fill up any train of any size but if i can get a comparator output from only the ones that are connected i can then send that signal down and block these funnels from actually sending items through if it's not connected so i think this could work potentially well i'm doing an awful lot of work considering i've no idea if this will even work but now i've got a crazy amount of redstone all coming down from comparators out of these portable storage interfaces and this all goes down all individually without overlapping and comes down into all of these smart shoots locking them so if i break that shoot on there you can see that's locked if the repeater turns on because that storage interface is connected to something then it opens allowing items in but that does mean we're going to end up with a whole bunch of junk items on these belts that are not really doing anything which is not ideal you know what this is all just getting way too much it's getting way too silly and it's getting way too complicated but realistically i can't imagine i'm ever going to have more than one train down here collecting these items because they're going to a specific place and it also doesn't matter which items are within each container because they're just going to be sorted when they get to the other end anyway so as much as i really like this whole idea and i love the idea that this thing is what's distributing the items realistically i'm just gonna have to keep it simple well, at least i'm gonna have a whole bunch of resources now okay here's my new plan and it's quite complicated as i'm sure you can expect even though i'm trying to keep things simple underneath our storage drawers we now have chutes which are not fully connected we have belts going into these funnels which are going into our toolboxes which are determining which items we're having in each one and each toolbox will contain two sets of items and then some sticks just to fill up the slot so nothing else goes in there and the reason for doing this is we need the perfect quantities in each train car each train car has three item vaults and that means in order to get every single type of item in there we need to be very specific about which type of items go into which train car so these belts fill up these toolboxes those toolboxes then get emptied out into these item vaults and those item vaults then go into the specific train car but wait there's more to it we've got some redstone going on we've got a redstone link here which is taking a signal from our station when the train is parked at the station we will get a redstone output from the station to say that the train is there and that's really important for this design because we don't want to overload too many items of each type going into the train so how this works is when the train is there this clutch will be locked so none of these belts can go so these toolboxes won't fill up but when the train's gone those toolboxes can fill up but in order to stop those toolboxes emptying out into these vaults while the train is gone this clutch is inverted so these belts will stop when there's no train these belts will only go emptying out these toolboxes when the train is there which means the items will flow straight through these vaults and into the train cars and hopefully the train will fill up and then it will go so now if i attach this chain drive here those belts should stay where they are but these ones should go emptying out the toolboxes like i said the items will go through there and hopefully they are actually going into the train they are the trains are filling up with those items so now all of these toolboxes should be empty they are 100 totally empty which means our train can then go and we're all i need to do now is move the train forward slightly so the station no longer has a signal and now if we go back out and go down there we should see that all of those items are now filling into the toolboxes but they're not going anywhere so the toolboxes are refilling I don't know. oh we've got no cobblestone how have we got no cobblestone well forgetting the fact that we've got absolutely no cobblestone let's not worry about that let's just marvel at how good this is and how well that worked with all of the other items that are now oh we're not getting what oh, okay i've dropped a couple of things on the belts here that's fine get rid of that <laughs> let's get rid of that and there we go now this toolbox is filling up with all the right number of items this is fantastic news there we go all of the toolboxes have refilled and that means the next time the train comes into the station it should all connect again and start again so let's find out all of those things should connect yes i've just seen them connect let's quickly run down there and make sure it's doing what it should be doing yes the items are going through there but they're not filling into there these are now all empty again however they're going to be full now because i didn't go and drop them off anywhere else but the system works it's a working system this is absolutely fantastic finally the only downside is that that means this does absolutely nothing but don't worry about that because i've got a plan for this 
Then for this plan, I need Dawn back. It's going to work this time, I'm pretty sure. Here we go, Dawn's in the chair. And now all I've got to do is give Dawn a schedule that says, if there's a train at the station, send the container to the other end and then come back again. And off she goes. So it doesn't really do anything now, but it looks quite good, I think. Oh, and, oh she's gone back again. There we go. But if I move the train away from the station, so we're not getting that redstone power, she shouldn't, after she goes back this time, she shouldn't come forward again. And now she should just stay there. Wonderful. It worked. Good job, Dawn. I would like you to go a bit slower, though. Limit max speed. There we go. Let's just limit the speed to 5%. Off you go, Dawn. That's more like it. Yes, that's a much better speed. Oh, this looks good. Oh, it looks wonderful. I'm so happy it's all working at last. Now, all I've got to do is tidy up this entire area, decorate everything, fix the holes in the floor, and, well, everything. And there we go. We've got a fully filled up station area. We've got a whole bunch of containers. We've got a dumper truck that's not actually a train or anything. It's just there for looks. We've got a fork truck that's lifting up that container there. We've got a container here with the doors open that all sand's pouring out of over here. We've got a pile of cobblestone and more containers, piles of barrels everywhere. And I've used mechanical bearings to skew them all a little bit so they don't look too uniform and straight. And over here, I've done the similar sort of thing where I've stacked these. So again, they don't look too uniform and just very, very odd. And I think the whole thing's come out really well it looks nice and full but not too busy there's still plenty of space to get around and it looks like a fly has got in my train shoe fly so let's just move this around here a little bit yeah this looks fantastic i'm really happy with it i think it's absolutely great and we've just done another thousand days in this world so it must be time for a movie thanks for watching peeps goodbye